that there's room and space for everybody and everything. I think that we have to stop being our own worst critics. Um, we have to stop putting ourselves underneath the white gaze and what's acceptable to them. And I think that colors a lot of the work that we do and it colors a lot of our opinions about respectability, politics, and acceptability. And I think that we need to focus on urban storytelling, touching the audience that we want it to touch, the one that's important. Yes, would it be nice if we have the, 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 the reach and, and the broad spectrum that the rest of, especially in this society has? Yes, but if we're too afraid to create things for ourselves based on what others will think, we are going to consistently be in that same hole that we find ourselves in now. Very good point, very good point. Anybody else want to follow up? I feel like every story has room, every story has value, but I am a girl from the hood. I'm a girl from Queens, New York. I'm a girl who walked through crack piles to go to school, right? So that is a part of me. I often felt ashamed as I excelled out of that environment through education, as though I was somehow betraying what I am and who I am. And so therefore, there was a piece of me that felt a slave to what I was while I was trying to become what I am. One of the things I think um, when it comes to urban theater, I, I kind of look at it as, a, well, in comparative, the black exploitation era. Mm -hmm. It was a need for that type of film because blacks weren't given the opportunity to have their place in cinema. But the reason why the era died out is because it did not evolve. The stories became watered down, they became stereotypical, and they lost their, 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 their luster. Um, from the standpoint of a creator, as a, as a playwright, as a screenwriter, um, I like to write about black aspirations, okay? Not defined by my present circumstances, but what I aspire to be, what to aspire to become. And one of, the, one of the stories that we all know about is the Raising the Sun. And so it's, a, it's an example of black aspirations. They, they wanted something beyond their current set of circumstances. And so when we create or when we look at urban theater, it's not a one size fits all. A black person from the hood versus a black person from the suburbs have very different experiences, okay? But those stories must still be told. Miss <laughs> Bailey, she um, got a lot of backlash for being black and playing The Little Mermaid when um, in, in, in technicality, Disney wrote The Little Mermaid, The mm -hmm. Little Mermaid, and Mermaid is a fictional character. It's, it's a fish. It's a fish. fish. Yes. And so therefore, th there should have been no cause to race. But because um, some people were like, oh no, we can't have that. She can't be, the Little Mermaid is supposed to be white. The Little Mermaid is a fictional fish <laughs> created mm -hmm. to say you can find love without saying. So this is, I'm, I'm, this is just me being a bubble, right? Right. If you take black characters mm -hmm. and you say they're fictional, because we know that this, these stories are, are white stories based right. on Hans Christian Anderson's story. Right. How does it limit us as writers and creators when we want to take on their stories rather than giving us space for our own? Mm -hmm. how, does, how does the stunt casting and the not allowing our stories to be told because we don't want your story? But this is my opinion only. I don't want a black mermaid. I want some story that you wrote, Dr. Shot, all of these creatives here, why is Disney not telling those stories? And based off of African folklore, because it exists. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. With the Anansi stories, with, why are these not being turned in? How do they limit us by just recycling us in and then trying to stunt cast us in? Yes, God. Well, direct our movie. We need him to direct The Color Purple. We need him to direct all these other movies, because without him, we can't necessarily get to a higher place. I don't necessarily think that's true. Black people, in my opinion, are the highest people who consume the most stuff. So we consume the most stuff, and they have, there's been multiple, multiple, multiple um, commercials of how to sell to a Negro. 
right? Multiple, we're the highest people consume. Why can't we consume something from one another? If we make these things and we go to a black producer or a black executive or a black writer or whoever, and we fight to push our stories out there, like the black exploitation films that did start to become just one story or very stereotypical, if we just went back to that instead instead, and be like, we have all of our stories. We have the hood story, we got the suburban story, we got the homeless story, we got all those stories. But we have to do that with just each other because if we don't and we allow other people from the outside to continue sitting at our table, they will continue to take from our table while we are set there left thinking, where, where are we coming from? Who are we? What are we going to do with ourselves? And that's where, that's how they want it. That's the cycle they want to keep going. I don't feel much getting like, what's left? Like, the scraps. It's like, okay, well, I know if me and five of the white people walk in this room, it is four <laughs> positions, I can count myself out. But like, if it's six positions and it's two other black people there, I got to make sure I go ahead and knock him down. You know, we get the scraps, we get what's ever left. So. We kind of came to the place and we're knocking each other down to be up there, to be accepted by people who run what we have around us. Yeah. Oh, I think that's very real because I think it's a, a very much crabs in the barrel mindset. Um, and a lot of times it's just trying to trying to get their own. I think the thing is though, as a nation, as a whole, black, white, whatever, uh, America in itself is somewhat of a divided country, and a divided culture, uh, whereas like places like the West Indies are really you know, culture oriented or really close together and really like, but as a whole, I think it has been the goal from a long time to kind of divide us as a people and separate us and now, oh, we not cool with you because of this, because of that, or X, Y, and Z, and that need to kind of have that over somebody else. I think we're going to. I'm, I'm going to interject right here because uh, just to say this, and I know I might be talking to the choir here, but if that's the case, if we, we buy into all of this, we believe all this rhetoric that we talk about it, why is it that we are the perpetrators of all of this? Why is it that when the jazz ensemble has a concert on campus, the theater people don't show up? Why is it when the theater people have a play, the choir doesn't show up? Why is it when the dance ensemble is doing something, we got five dance ensembles on one campus, we got five, all this kind of stuff, and we believe that, hey, we got to be there for each other, we have to support each other, but we are the perpetrators of this disconnect of, of, of all of this stuff. So I, I think it goes back to saying that we can preach it, but we need to walk it. We need to, we need to be the ones who say, we got to, we got to, as she said, demand some changes. We got to support it, we got to be there. We too separated in our own artistic world uh, of, 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 of our movement. So that's just a little interjection I wanted to. One thing is, is that, because that's interesting, one thing is, is that it's how we, we, we teach. I talked about early black aspirations. We always, little kids want to be Steph Curry. They want to be LeBron. But no one talks about Jeannie Buss. Mm. Like, we don't want to know who that is. Yeah. She literally owns the Lakers, OK? And they always talk about our athletic prowess and our performance ability. But they're not talking about those that own companies. The ownership is where it starts. And when we look at it in terms of how we uh, perpetuate certain things, think about it in terms of like when you do plays at your school. If you're in the play, you're gonna publicize it to the, to the cows come home. But if you're not in the play, you may just have to mention okay? But you're all under the same umbrella. And so one of the things that's important is that it sounds good to say, oh, support black and be down for each other. But those are just mere words, okay? You know, you go into a black-owned business, you want a discount, okay? But if you go to a business that's not, you ain't asking for a discount. You ain't asking for well, uh, looking for the clearance rack. You know what, what you're coming into. So it's about building an expectation and then following through with the action if we want this thing that we so desperately say that we deserve, this whole black empowerment, this whole, this whole supporting each other. You gotta support each other when you don't have a direct benefit of the results, okay? If I'm not in the show, but I'm publicizing it, it don't help me because I'm not in it. You're not coming to see me, but I'm supporting my castmates or my peers, okay? So that's one of the things that, that has to happen is that we have to have, we don't necessarily have to have skin in the game in order to be a part of it. How do you vote?
let's get started. Let's start wishing them on. Okay, uh, let's share it. Um, I definitely started. First of all, hey everybody. Hey. Hey. I enjoyed I caught a little, a little taste of the last panel, so that was exciting. Um, yes, I'm Sekhan Simba. Uh, born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia, to an American mother and a Liberian father. And um, which is where I get my name from. But yeah, I started in theater. Uh, definitely, you know, a little kid doing a little dance classes, all that stuff, and uh, a few piano lessons that didn't stick. <laughs> By the time I got to high school, yes, I met uh, Freddie Hendricks, where I was at Tri-Cities High School in Atlanta, Georgia. So, was playing him, and so in the future, I ended up playing Julie's wife on uh, The Wonder Years. But to answer your question, I really got a lot of encouragement and courage from Freddie Hendricks. He really inspired us to believe in ourselves, to believe and understand our own beauty and our talent, and to work hard um, organically um, using different methods of acting, but also finding our own organic strength and um, power within ourselves, for sure. Keynote. Keynote speaker, and we got a uh, your award, sir. Oh, it says greetings. Greetings, Oh, there's two. I actually forgot. Greetings, occasion is your selection and invocation. All right. Do I remember anything? No, I didn't. Oh, my God. No. Let's so apparently, we supposed to wait. Be, so y'all see every time for this? So like in Alabama, y'all did this. Yeah, we did. I didn't think we were gonna do it. Like Eric and Victoria sang last time. It was crazy. Like, like, it was, it was crazy. I think Isaac's just saying uh, a lovely day. I ain't got no neck, bro. What I think? <laughs> no, 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 I think, no, I think Isaac's just saying a lovely day. Like, we, a yeah. lovely day. Wanna think about I don't know, my voice, my voice is still going from yesterday. Then I look at you. She sing, I eat. Wow. Yeah, the Bree, go, go harmonize. And they try and might be like, you also have to go sing. Her voice is dead. Yeah. Markel, but take your voice lesson. Look how we're doing. You are poor. Mmm. Sounds about warmed up. Sounds warmed up. Sounds like you warmed up. Oh, wait a minute, I'm joking. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Why oh, y'all so far away? We have no idea where we're going to sit. And why would I pull up a chair when they're singing? I can't stop. Why could it? We gonna sing? Because this is a lot of people up in the chairs. They're just gonna be like, oh, y'all really want to be in here, huh? You just gonna sit at a different table? It's okay. Look at little Lexi. understanding the history that you are making, living, and came from. This is a historic event, and I have been doing my dissertation research mm -hmm. on the creation of the first Masters of Fine Arts program at a historically black college or university. This has been an absolute dream come true just to be here. I've been doing research for now four years. This is my fourth year, and I will be uh, finishing up my doctorate this year at Texas Tech University. Yep. The innocence of you. Hey, Victoria. Woo! The pillars of this foolishness that lead us to the truth.
everybody. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the middle of snacking on my feet. I'm sad. The awards, bro. Can't have awards, no food. The food is the award. Yeah, free food. My kill's full. <laughs> Let me tear this up real quick. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, Master. Competitions first. We're dealing with the design competitions first. All right, for the the Jewelry Cox costume design, we have good, which is third place, which is none. We have excellent. Uh, Hannah Buckles. From
Fire Man University. Linda 
Malone Colon. Yeah! If you got that much support, we, we appreciate it. Let me get a picture. I ain't got no neck. <laughs> I got no throat. My name is Darren Gill. I am a sophomore at the University of Michigan and Shore got to president E-Board. So I'm up here today to introduce our 2025 E-Board members. So as I call your name, please come. So starting with our social media manager. Oh wait, I'm sorry, before we even get into our next year, I want my members from this year to please stand. Yeah. 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 I can't do any of this without you. You have worked yeah. so hard.
We are called to tell our stories, to produce our stories, build our stories, and design, thank you, our stories. Teach our stories and let them echo far and wide. As an outgoing senior at the North Carolina Central University, it has been an honor to once again experience the National Association of Dramatic Speech and Arts Conference. I sat in the cafeteria yesterday at the dock of the bay <laughs> talking about how stress-free learning at an HBCU has been. Not that the stress does not exist with assignment deadlines, shows, rehearsals, outside projects, etc. <coughs> but the freedom that comes with being in a space that has allowed me to be unapologetically black, yes. taking up space with my black self, feeling myself with my black self, and expanding my breath with my black self. For the last three years, that feeling has been nurtured and cultivated here. And in order to keep this priceless organization alive, it is imperative that we continue to invest in Nazca. First, we must honor the spirit of our ancestral heritage and continue their legacy. Each one must teach one. We must honor all areas as theater stands at a crossroads of so many professions. Here we learn a great deal about the human condition, how to be responsible, work together, work independently, ask questions, critique our work so that we can grow, build the world of the play through the storytelling, the marketing, the lights, sound, costumes, props, direction, and more. Let us all work together. <coughs> Let us be patient with each other and extend each other grace as we forge our way. Faculty, we charge you with the responsibility of inspiring, motivating, and correcting your students while embracing them with love. And I know for myself that all of our professors do that so well. Students, we charge you with making yourselves ready to receive information and pack up and carry with you all that your teachers and mentors can pour into you. Finally, we must all honor our artistic and academic voices. They work as a pair in the educational arena. There is a proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Our mission is to go far and remember our responsibility to helping generations yet to come. It is, let us bear each other up. This is our charge. Yeah. Yeah. As we to the close, all of our seniors, would you please stand up to be recognized? Yes, we are.
Oh, no. I was just oh, we, just did it we literally just did it on Thursday. You missed it. Y'all missed it. Oh. Yes, no, I went to see her at the show. Yeah, I went to see her at the show. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y